Steve Nallen is a British actor, writer, voice artist and impressionist who's probably best known for performing on Spitting Image doing Margaret Thatcher, amongst others. And he's with us here just now. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Very good. Yeah. So I just want to get straight into it and go back to the start of your career and your life. How did you first get interested in the act? and all the comedy and things um i think that the the, the acting was just there i mean i don't yeah. know i come from a pretty working class family in leeds no theater in the background no acting no writing no performing no anything really hmm. and but i just wanted to dress up and i had a scarf i remember when i was about six years old and this scarf could be a turban or a shawl or whatever and in each and each time i put the shawl on or the hat on or whatever mm. i became a different character yeah, yeah. so yeah. essentially i've been doing performing and being different people since about the age of five or six and wow. um you, you can't work out comedy then because you don't really understand what comedy was but i mm. i used to watch all the raw variety shows and and i used to get bored with the music but i used to just yeah. wait for all those great comics to come on um, yeah. So I was always sort of very interested in it. And then at school, you know, I did impressions of teachers and um, I loved Mike Yarwood's show. So I did characters he did. And and, and as I said, oh, you, you know, you can do this. And we put you on on a school show. And then I went and started doing shows in working men's uh, clubs in Leeds when I was a teenager. Um, and the spitting image thing was after university. And, you yeah. know, I simply wrote to John. And I said, look, I can do funny voices and will you see me and he did and that was it really so then, anyway that's a very <laughs> that's 10 years in about a minute and a half <laughs> yeah i mean that's surprisingly easy to join spitting image because i understand that at the time they were looking for people to do puppetry and the voice did that's you have right. to kind of learn that or i did yeah. i mean what happened what happened was um i wrote this letter and I, I, I had played Mrs. Thatcher in, in Edinburgh at the Fringe as a mm. student in a student show and, and the reviews were good uh, and I uh, there was other stuff as well. So I sent the, you know, the Scotsman review off to John Lloyd. Yeah. Uh, I sent to about four addresses and one of them got to him and he just happened to be in Birmingham where I was living at the time, uh, uh, you know, on the right day. And then he said, come and meet me. And to cut a very long story short, I accidentally got in, in, into the building uh, by a mistake because they thought I was John Lloyd. So I ended up inside the building and he turned up and he was a bit embarrassed because um, he thought I was a joke. He honestly thought I was going to be a, he said, look, I thought you were a bar story. I thought this guy thinks he can do Margaret Thatcher. He's 22 and he's obviously, you know, not quite all there. So yeah. I, I saw him because I, he said, I saw you because I thought you'd be a good story to tell in the bar afterwards. Anyway, yeah. what happened was he said, well, well how are you going to do the impression? And are you going to do it? I said, no, no, no. You've got to ask me a question and then I'll answer it as Margaret Thatcher. That's the audition. And he thought, OK. So I said, well, ask me a question and I'll answer it as Margaret Thatcher. So now I'm going to do exactly to you what I do to John. And that's say, right, Toby, yeah. come on, uh, your turn. Ask Margaret Thatcher a question. I don't really know. What's your favourite food? It's not very oh, important. goodness me, please let me finish an important point. <laughs> haddock. I've always been very, very fond of British haddock. You know, one's taste uh, in food is very, very basic. We came from a, a farming community. My, my family were very, very good. You know, we, had, uh, we knew all the Lincolnshire farmers. Therefore, we always had fresh food, fresh vegetables, and fish on Friday, and it was always haddock. Oh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and so I tried not, I mean, sort of, that's the sort of thing Mrs. Thatcher would have said. So, yeah. you know, I didn't try to make it funny. I just thought I'll uh, I'll, I'll go for it and, mm. and uh, you know, in character. And then he said to me, what other voices do you do? Then I said, oh, I do this one, this one, and this one. And he <laughs> said, um, and then the, the most important thing was on the same day, and this is how fate works sometimes. It just worked out for me. Mm. On the same day, uh roger law was there ah. and uh he took an instant liking to the idea of uh, of a bloke doing mrs thatcher he he liked me straight away uh john liked me and they said well just turn up 
you know. Yeah. And then I met Louise Gold, and what had happened was um, the previous week they'd had open auditions, and it had been a disaster. Uh. Um, nobody had passed the open auditions, and I'm pretty s- certain that if I'd have gone to the open audition and not the meeting that I had with John at Central Television, I wouldn't be sat here talking to you, yeah. you know. Um, that's just the way things work out. So I, I got, in, I was just, everything worked out that day for me. Mm, yeah. So how hard was it actually to learn the puppetry? Because I suppose it's something you would have never thought of when you're just doing impressions. Well, no, I I, I never particularly liked puppets. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I, you know, they're great, but I, you know, I was never a particularly fan. And, and that's a big issue actually, because a lot of a lot of the puppeteers that you know at the age of six want to be puppeteers and that's great mm. um it, it, spitting image wasn't always a show for them because you you know that, that you couldn't be very you couldn't be precious about the puppets themselves uh you had to throw them about and all the rest of it and 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 puppeteers yeah. actually are very you know that they, they they absolutely love the things themselves, and they don't always like the idea of them being thrown around. And you couldn't do that on, on and and television has a you know is a complicated discipline, um, and and it doesn't suit everybody. And we had a situation where quite a lot of very 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 good puppeteers came onto the show, and they just didn't work on the show because, mm. um, that, that, you know that they they couldn't cope with the the, the, the just fly by your pants way we did it and the nature of television. Um, yeah. And Louise, though Louise Gold, who was a wonderful, wonderful teacher, I and she obviously worked on the Muppet. So on my first day, I I said to her, "How, how do I become a puppeteer?" And she gave me the puppet, and she said, "Make this look real." Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, and how do I do that? And she she basically said, "Look, it doesn't look real, does it? It's on the floor. It doesn't look real." I, I, no, it doesn't. It's just uh, she said, "Make it look at something." Yeah, and that's the trick that she taught me. Uh, make always make it look at something. Um, doesn't really matter what it is. If it looks at something, it it it, it it's it's it it looks real. So yeah. I'm looking now at, at the white cat, which is the puppet I've got from Spitting Image, which they gave me. Um, yeah. And it's sat on a it's on the floor and it's sat on a little cushion, but it's got big eyes, but it's got a mouse in front of it. So it looks like this. It looks like a cat looking at a mouse. If the mouse wasn't there, it would look like a dolly. Yeah. But because it's actually looking at a mouse, I can see it now. Yeah. It actually looks as if it's staring at the mouse. Ah. It looks real, and that's basically what Louise. And there was obviously technical stuff we had to learn about how the puppets worked, and they were very heavy and and. You know, and and also I did I did eyes, and I got onto an arm, and then they got onto a, a right arm, and then I got moved up to smaller puppets, and then eventually they gave me a bigger one, uh, and that was after two series. It was like the Japanese, the way the, the Japanese do puppetry. You know, you 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 start operating a toe, and then you do a foot, and then you do a leg, and then you know you you eventually get to do the the whole body. Yeah. Um, uh, so it was a bit like that. So they didn't risk me with a big puppet until about series two or three. Mm. Um, but I loved it. I, I I grew to you know really really like working with puppets. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose it's interesting because Louise Gold herself is an example of someone who came from an acting background, and exactly. when she joined the Muppet Show, had to learn puppetry on the job. So I suppose she would have had a lot of understanding of you. I think so. Yeah. She she yeah. she absolutely understood that, and and. Uh, she un- and and she was very good at voices as well. She did mm. the best ever Queen voice, and um, uh, y- you know she she absolutely understood that, and she she knew that my background. You know, I've done drama at university. I'd been in plays. I'd you know done Chekhov and Brecht and all that sort of stuff. So uh, she, she knew that that was part of my background. And I used to stay with her mum as well, her mum and dad. So. Wow. Uh, I said to her, um, I've got nowhere to stay in, in London. She said, well, don't worry about that. I'll take you to see mum and dad. Huh. Um, and I said, well, you know, what, 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 she said, don't worry. So we walked into John and Una and walked into the house mm. and I was introduced and she said, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And, <laughs> and Una and said, what's that? Steve staying here? Yes. And <laughs> that was, I stayed for about six months wow. with um with John and Una, and then um, they, they, and were lovely, you know. The, the, yeah. the, the, 
uh, and I had a house in Birmingham and then Una um, came to, uh, she was an actress, she came to Birmingham and she stayed with me in Birmingham. Wow. So, um, and so I was able to pay them back. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Did you feel a particular pressure being Margaret Thatcher? Because I suppose at the time she's like the biggest character on the show and at that time... Well, the... she, she, she wasn't, she wasn't. I mean, mm. in, in the early days, um, the, 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 they had lots of American characters, you know, that Ronald mm. Reagan they was hoping to, for American sales, which never really happened. But, the, yeah. you know, she was in it, you know, every week. Um, uh but, but, but yeah, her character grew and it changed. It wasn't my idea, for example, to dress Margaret Thatcher up in 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 a suit, and it wasn't Spitting Images' idea. It was actually the puppeteer called Anthony Asbury, oh. uh, who I'm still in contact with, and 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 he he was the one that said he he was an American, so he said, you know, why don't we dress her up in the man suit? <laughs> yeah. She's a man, you know. She do all that. So no, you can't do that. Why not? She's a man. She's a man. Make you know. And he loved the idea of dressing her up as Churchill. Well, that was his idea. That wasn't the 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 puppete- the um you know the program makers. Mm. And they were very good like that. You know, they were very democratic. We could offer suggestions and ideas, and and um uh, they they would they would run with them, or you know, and we we would make suggestions for voices and and um making puppets i suggested to them doing alan bennett which i did mm. because I, I love doing alan bennett you see because i'm from <laughs> leeds i think i mentioned that and yeah. and then i did my little alan bennett for them and they said well we quite like alan bennett we don't really want to do him i said well you know i've been working on this impression now for a while and nobody else does him and in those days nobody did alan bennett at all so yeah. um and I was the first one, so they said, "Okay, we'll make him." And then he, about two or three series, he was he, he was in it more often than Margaret Thatcher. But to yeah. answer your question, yes, I I, I think um, uh, you, you know I I I was aware that um, you know that, that that she was the one that they often wanted to um, you know have on the the tube. We went and did the tube live with all those pop stars and people. That was always very exciting. Um, yeah. And there was, you know, the, the Queen and Margaret Thatcher was always, you know, that's what th- those were the ones they wanted, you know, always on other shows. So, yes. Mm. Yeah. Were you quite wary of maybe being, I don't know, too harsh about people? Because I don't know if your views necessarily aligned with Thatcher or not. I think most of us were were, were politically, I don't know what people voted, but, you know, mm. there's the certainly... Um, Roger Law and um, Peter Flock were very much of the left. Yeah. Though actually, they just hated politicians. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they 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 had a real dislike for politicians, and they knew political journalists, and they would have lunch with them, and then they'd come back and tell us stories about you know this particular <laughs> politician being a real real nasty guy or whatever. And that's the reason why we're going to go for him. You know, we know what he's really like. So. Um, uh, and they're politicians, so who cares? You know, yeah. I, 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 I don't like politicians. At all. I don't like any of them. People say, no. who do you vote? I, I really don't like any of them Same. Um, um, at all. So uh, we had, I, I was lucky. I, we had a very good local MP. She wasn't in government. Um, well, she was yeah. in the Labour Party, but, uh, you know, so on a, I, I was happy to vote for her because she lived in the next street. You yeah. know, yeah. that was more to do with her and um, the fact that she lived in the next street more than anything. Yeah. And do you feel like your portrayal of Thatcher and I suppose, you know, some of the other characters in the cabinet on the show helped or hindered the government's popularity <laughs> in any way? I, I do you know that's a I, yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I think mm. that at the time we felt that we were doing some damage to the government and yeah. certainly that's some of the feedback we got when we did a um, a 30 year retrospective at the uh, film uh, institute in in london and, and one of the guys in the audience says you know it was very important to me at 10 o'clock on a sunday night to watch your show because we felt here was a voice against the government against a majority of 150 and against all that power that Mrs. Thatcher had. And, yeah. and here was a voice that, that, that was saying, you know, no, and, and it's too much and it's wrong and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, now I'm not so sure that I agree with him. That was a great voice to have, 
whether we made any difference or not, I don't know, or whether we were a valve, you know, that, that, that let, let off steam that, you know, that allowed people to, to laugh on uh, Sunday night, but still vote conservative on Monday morning. I don't mm. know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a real issue is that as to whether or not in the end comedy does, does any good or makes people change their minds. Yeah. John, um, John Wells, who did the wonderful, Dennis Thatcher. Yeah, he said to me, he said, he said, all we can do is move around the furniture. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we, we're not going to change somebody's mind, but yeah. we can possibly move the furniture in there, rearrange the furniture so they can slightly think about something in a different way. Mm. Um, I think that's what that potentially that's what that satire can do: just rearrange, move the furniture. Yeah. Absolutely. And some of the other characters you did on the show, what were some of your favourites to do? Well, I, I loved um, doing, the, there was the Archbishop of Canterbury, who probably nobody remembers now, and, mm. and he was a little puppet. And, and I did quite a good impression of him, uh, Robert Ronsey. And like all archbishops, um, you know, they, they just do sermons. So he spoke very slowly and deliberately. And he was he was he was the one that married Charles and Diana, yeah. um, and uh, and so John said, "Yeah, Steve, it's a great voice. It's terrible uh, for the puppet because yeah. it's a little puppet and it's too slow, and mm. it's you know you, you'll kill the sketch." Uh, so he said, "But it's a good voice. So what I want you to do, and this is the best note I've ever had, he said, he said what I want you to do is take that voice and make him seven years old." <laughs> I, I said. Well, so I have to take this voice slow and old and sort of just make him as if he's seven years old. Do it like that. He said, that's perfect. <laughs> so that's how he developed. So, you know, and he was arguing about the existence of Santa Claus. They had him as one of the He said, of course, there's a Santa Claus. If there wasn't a Santa Claus, who'd feed the reindeer? <laughs> and um, which is great theological question yeah. um so um i love doing him i like doing the queen mum i i suggested to john lloyd i said why didn't we do beryl reed he said well what's the point of beryl reed you know we're not going to make a puppet of beryl reed i said no 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 not not make a puppet of beryl reed not 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 do her but use that voice for the queen mother mm. he said well how would that work I said, well, you know, the Beryl Reed, she had this character called Marlene, which she did on the variety stage in the 1940s and 50s. So why don't we get the Queen Mum, who likes, you know, she's very, very, she likes all the East Enders. Why don't we do her like this, you see? And he said, that's, you know, we tried it. Some people thought it wouldn't work and it was a disastrous idea. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it did work. So... The Queen Mum ended up with this sort of black country accent because that's the character Bill Reed had. And I love doing her. She was great fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> I so rarely do this now. I'm going to have a glass of water now because I so rarely, it's not a voice I ever do anymore. Mm. Mm. I love doing it. It was nice, nice, it was nice to bring it back. Yeah. Absolutely. And the more recent series of Spitting Image that came back last year, you came back as like the ghost of Margaret Thatcher as well, right? The ghost, <laughs> literally the ghost. Yeah, yeah. she was the ghost. Um, I, I got um, uh, an, an email very late at night um, <laughs> and there was all sorts of reasons why I, uh, I'd not answered it, but um, uh, we got an email very late at night and, and they'd been trying to cut my hand, contact my agent and it hadn't worked out. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm free tomorrow afternoon. So um, I, I got the script the next day and I, I thought I'd be going into town. I thought they'd send a, you know, a car or something and, hmm. and I'd, you know, have to wear a mask and all that sort of stuff. And they said, no, 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 you're going to do it at home. Uh -huh. You have to do it at home. So, you know, and I, I've got some recording equipment at home. So, uh, we did it at home. So although I did the sketch and I did my lines, yeah. I never interacted with any of the other actors. Oh. So when I saw the sketch, um, uh, obviously I knew what the sketch was about, but I didn't know who any, who any of the, the other voices, were, you know, what they were going to say, really, or how they were going to say it. It worked, you know, it worked okay. And, um, 
and and I, there was some nice things said on Twitter. That it was nice to have Mrs. Thatcher back, and it was yeah. a very funny sketch, and it was a joy to, you know, that that the, the, there's a whole new team on Spitting Image, and that's great. And yeah. you know, I'm yeah. 60 now, and and why would you want a six year old doing all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, but um, I was very very happy to um, to go back and and do it. It was um, it was great fun. And actually, yeah. I, I then I met a couple of the voices, people like Luke Kempner and um, and and people. I, I've sort of met them since, so it was, you know, I've sort of good to work with them too. Yeah, and are there any other impressions from kind of today's world that you've more recently been able to start doing? Not really, because I think that you, you, this happened to Mike Yarwood. I worked with Mike Yarwood in the eighties, mm. and uh, he got to a certain age, even younger than I am actually, and uh, he, he basically said, "I I can't do the." the new voices and his argument was that if you're 25 and you're doing an impression of somebody who's 50 that's funny yeah if you're 55 and you're doing an impression of somebody who's 20 it doesn't work mm -hmm. i'm not mentioning yeah. names but i've seen you know older impressionists do impressions of ant and deck yeah. uh, it just doesn't work you know it it, it looks looks very strange um because yeah. it's, you know it, it's a young person's game is is satire and impressions in a way because you you're poking fun because you're in your 20s and you can poke fun at people in their 50s but yeah um, it, and i think also technically i don't know why this is and i've spoken to impressionists of my generation we lose the talent um mm. we're not as good as we used to be um and i don't understand why and yeah. and i I enjoyed it tremendously, but I've not even thought about doing any voices at all. Yeah, uh, people yeah. were ringing me up about Theresa May and say, do you want to come on the show and you know, do your Theresa May? I said, I don't do Theresa May. I've never tried. <laughs> what do you mean? You, you know, you did this wonderful Margaret Thatcher. You surely can do Theresa May. I've not honestly tried to do her. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, I can honestly say to you, Toby, I've so, never so. tried to do her. Mm. I, by, there was one voice I got about 10 years ago which was um, a politician at the time, and she's still going, but not as a politician. And that is Anne Whittacombe. <laughs> and Anne Whittacombe is a very uh, odd, stressful voice. Uh, and it's a rather strangulated one. Uh, but as soon as I was able to do it, uh, she left politics and went on to Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, so she's still sort of, uh, you know, around and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I say I met her um, as a friend of mine who's worked at the Sunday Times and, and it was a, a do and he, she was there and he was there. And he said, oh, Anne, come and meet Steve. Yeah. So um, uh, and I she said, are you going to do me? I said, um, yes, I am. And I'll tell you something about your voice, Anne. I said it's got two notes in it. It's got a high note and a low note at the same time. And she looked at me and she said, yes, it has, hasn't it? It has. She knew that. You know, she, yeah. So I said, um, I said, do you know who else has got that voice? Uh, 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 you know, that, that technical thing in the voice. Yeah. And she said, uh, uh, no, I don't. So I said, the other person who has that voice is Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson has the high and the low at the same time. A very different voice because it's an American voice, but if you listen to it, it's got high and low at the same time. And she had no idea who Homer Simpson was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so that was a bit of a waste of time, I think. She, she just yeah. nodded and then walked away. <laughs> <laughs> But she, um, she does, you know, she's got that, she has got that, um, um, you know, and, 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 you know, I, people say, oh, you're Homer Simpson. May you Simpson very good. <laughs> but it, it took me ages and ages to do. And it, 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 and I tried to do some other sort of cartoon voices, which I can do, but yeah. it, they, they all take so long to do now. So um, I, I've been doing some other acting and, and, you know, very sort of things video games and stuff so i keep i keep i keep active mm. yeah and you also worked as an additional muppet performer on muppet treasure island according to imdb i was an ink spot i ah. was an ink spot and then a chicken um, ah nice we we um the on the on the days where there were um you know a uh, hundred characters for the big big numbers and stuff they would pretty much bring in every puppeteer in the country. And mm. I was on the list and uh, that was great fun. I enjoyed that. And actually I went back and worked for Henson's recently 
um, uh, on Dark Crystal. Oh, right. Um, and again, uh, it, it, they, they had these days on Dark Crystal. They had a team of eight people, including Louise Gold, mm. uh, who were on it every day. And, and But every so often, they, you know, they'd they have a crowd scene or whatever on Dark Crystal. Yeah. Um, and, and they were also making Star Wars at the same time. So a lot of the puppeteers were were sort of used up on Star Wars. And then I got this bizarre phone call at sort of 10 in the morning from dark crystal they're saying can you come in i said what next week you know no now could you come <laughs> in now i.e could you be here by 11 o'clock wow uh, and i said yeah where are you they text me the address and i literally got in the car drove and then did two weeks on the show so that <laughs> wow. was great you know um but that, that, that i felt as if i was coming out of retirement but it was quite nice to see louise and the other puppeteers all you know bit, spitting image people and 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 dark crystal i don't know if you've seen it, it it's um it, it it's it's you know it's a fantastic looking show and and mm. it was you know it was a lovely lovely show to work on so that was that was quite fun i think as well yeah because the detail on the show is great because you know even in the original film the back of the sets were even painted oh it, the, 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 the i mean when i turned up um mm. I can't remember the name of the studios now, but they, they used to be a carpet factory. One of those things that, you know, they'd taken over this whole area. Yeah. Uh, they'd made, I think they'd made Jurassic world there the previous six months, or whatever. Mm. It was two huge sound stages now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they were absolutely, I was pretty much gobsmacked at the sheer size of it, you know, and they absolutely huge. Uh, the puppets were beautifully, beautifully made. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, because of the way the, the I never got a chance to read the script because they don't re reveal what the script is to uh, to people and yeah. um, and I and I did some um, I was eyes and blinks and things like that mm -hmm. you know that's that's what and and I but but I knew everybody you know I I you know that's the thing that you work on those shows you you, you just need to turn up do the job. And sometimes you're there all day in the room just chatting away. And then at half past five, you suddenly get called into the studio and you've got to do the job. You know, that's yeah. that's sort of what you're paid for that 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 time that they need you uh, to do the job. And but other than that, I, it was a, it was a really nice atmosphere to work on. I It was a, a real pleasure was that. Yeah. And are you working on anything at the moment that you're able to talk about? Um, yes, I'm, I'm because it was released a few days ago, and I rang up the um, uh, the, 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 the well, I, I messaged the person. I said, "Well, can I now talk about you know the fact that I'm I'm on this?" Yeah. Um, and it's a a, a, pretty, a big video game called Evil Genius Two, um, and uh, I play quite a few characters on on that. Um, and uh, Brian Blessed's on it. Samantha Bond's on it. Uh, and I've had these conversations with um, uh, Brian and um, and uh, Samantha, but we've never met. You know, you yeah. you, you do it all privately in in your own. I do it all from home because I've got a little studio at home. Um, so, uh, but that's a really you know. I'm told that it's it's one of the big selling games at the moment. It, uh, but I'm not a game gamer, so I don't really know these things. But from what I understand, it's been very successful. And and they, they and and they had a symphony orchestra which they recorded all their stuff before the lockdown. Wow. And you know, the video games is a big industry now, and, and mm. they don't do it in the way they used to. You know, they, they they spend proper money on it, and they you know they had an entire symphony. So they've got an entire uh, musical score for it now, which is yeah. brilliant. And it looks great, and I'm very proud to be, you know, to be part of that. And, um, um, but uh, you know, I have to say, look, can I talk about it now? And they said, yes, it's released now, so you're allowed to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, the, the, the video game industry is, is incredibly competitive, and mm. um, uh, that they, you know, that they don't like their the rivals knowing what's going on so yeah. they're very strict about what you can and cannot say but uh and they, they were lovely i had a really nice relationship with them and i did a couple of voices and i thought that was it and then they got in touch with me again and said oh could you do this voice and could you do this voice and oh, yeah. and i yeah. thought oh right i'm happy if you keep coming back and saying can you do these voices i'm very happy to to do them so that yeah, was great fun yeah I'm, I'm just i've got to the stage of my life now and I, I i sort of only want to do things i really want to do um hmm. you know and and, and enjoy uh, and that you know 
dark crystal i enjoyed and um that i enjoyed and uh you know i did an audio book which i enjoyed um so yeah it's great to do it's great stuff to do things that you love yeah absolutely well where are we able to keep up to date with you if we want to do that um well um i i i've got a website and stuff and i put stuff on there and i'm it's it's all being updated at the moment so so i'm going to be adding some some stuff on that um i'm currently uh one thing i decided to do uh, hopefully later this year but for because i've been busy with other things i've not been able to do it yet um the, the uh, audio books is a big thing so um i i want to do some audio books but the way i want to do it is to play all the characters prop you know big uh, as different voices and uh the tradition in audio book is just to read it and i don't i don't want to do that i sort of want i want to give character to all the different characters in the um in the story so i want mm. to do those books that are out of copyright now in the public domain um so i'm doing i'm preparing invisible man i'm preparing uh, robert louis stevenson's uh dr jekyll mr hyde oh, yeah. um the, the canterville ghost um so the idea there's many versions out there uh, yeah. you know but what I want to do is so with Canterville Ghost, I want the narrator to sound like John Gielgud because I think it's, that would be a good voice. So I want John Gielgud <laughs> to be able to do the voice of the narrator in the Canterville Ghost. And I sort of believe this would be a rather fun voice yeah. for a ghost detail. Do you agree with me? I'm sure you do. Uh, yes i think so i do <laughs> well i think that's a sort of an oscar wilde voice you know yeah. and and yeah. he and i've read the thing many times and and um um and there's some american characters in it as well so i'm i'm i'm, I'm sort of gonna borrow people like or uh, jimmy stewart you know i i'm gonna get some of the american characters to Ah, oh, sound a bit like Jimmy Stewart, and whether you know whether you know who John Gielgud is or Jimmy Stewart is mm. doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it's um, I, I'm going to do Christmas Carol. In fact, I've done Christmas Carol. Uh, I've got some more work to do on the narration, but I've yeah. I've done all the characters. So um, in in Christmas Carol, um, I decided to do Scrooge. Who else to do Scrooge? But um, Alice a Sim. No, you'll be wanting the whole day off tomorrow, I suppose. <laughs> if it's quite convenient, sir. No, no, it is not convenient. It is not fair. If I were to duck you half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used. No, but you don't think me ill-used, paying a day's work for no wages for no work. Something like that. Anyway, I can, I'm, I'm trying to remember it. Uh, so I, I'm going to do Alice the Sim for Scrooge. I hope you don't mind the accent. <laughs> um, and um, and the, the Mrs. Cratchit is quite a big character actually in the um, in the book more so than the films. Oh. Um, um, I, I, I want her to be Beryl Reed, the proper <laughs> Beryl Reed, not the no. She, she's quite argumentative in the book, mm. um, and uh, so that's the way I've you know. I, 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 oh, and, and uh, uh, Alec Guinness, I've got him to play Marley's ghost. I was your partner, Jacob Marley. <laughs> so um, the problem if you do all that, it takes hours to, to do it and edit. But mm. um, um, I just think it'd be more interesting to do it yeah. like that. Some people will like it and some people won't. So, uh, so anyway, I've got sort of those projects. I've got eight of those I'm planning to do yeah. uh, that are all in the public domain. Um, so that's something to look at. They're, they're not available yet, but um, hopefully by the end of the year, I've got a couple out. And Animal Farm, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I want to do Animal Farm. And I want to do it as a, a, in my natural accent, which is technically Yorkshire, and I probably don't sound it. Um, but I want to do it as a Yorkshire farmer. I want the narrator to be a Yorkshire <laughs> farmer because it's very direct as the, the prose. And, and, um, uh, and, I, and, and I think it will suit the, that's, I think the, the, the prose style would suit a very no-nonsense Yorkshire voice. So that's what I want to do for that. Yeah. If Mrs. Cratchit was argumentative in the book, then I guess Miss Piggy was probably the best portrayal of her. <laughs> well, she actually, you're absolutely right. You know, yeah. 
Um, and it's an odd thing because um, she's called Emily, isn't she? Yeah. In the, in the, in the, she's called Emily. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful film, and and um, uh, an absolutely, actually, I would say, I'm a bit of a. I've seen all the Christmas carols. Mm. Alice is in. Uh, uh, no, you have to put him top. Of course you do. Yes, you have to put Alice <laughs> Sim, the very best Scrooge. Yeah. But, you know, uh, come on. Uh, Michael Caine absolutely plays it straight. He plays mm. it real. Um, he, he doesn't wink at the camera. He's brilliant. Uh, yeah. And I think he's, you know, he's one of the great Scrooges. And um, uh, yeah, and, and it's and it's so funny as the film because of, you know, uh, is it Gonzo and Rizzo play? Oh, yeah. um, Dickens and and the, and the, I know the text so well. They are using the Dickens text for yeah. a lot of the time. It's 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 um they've cut it a lot, but mm. um uh, their their storytelling is is pretty much what what is in the Dickens narration. Yeah. Um. So it's a, it's a very and Mrs. Cratchit, you know, doesn't have a name in Dickens. Um. Mm. Uh, and I think she that's what she's called Emily, but in in the Christmas Carol one, but the the Muppets did. Yeah. Um. Uh. But um. Yeah. So uh, it worked so well, didn't it? That that. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, Fozzie Bear as um. Fozzie Wig. <laughs> as 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 Fozzy Wig. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that perfect casting yeah. if ever there was. It's probably why they made the movie for that one joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's as good a reason as any, but um, yeah. it, no, it was. Um, it's it, it was. I I one of the films I always watch at Christmas, and I remember watching it this. Well, what it's last year now, isn't it? Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Big fan. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today, then. Well, listen, well, it's been a, a great pleasure. Um, a bit, you know, Memory Lane mm -hmm. uh, is always a, a wonderful road to walk down. Oh, yes. So thank you for inviting me.